Hundreds of Afghans protest against the Taliban. Eight weeks after the Islamists took power, people in Afghanistan are torn between fear, resistance, and flight. They are the new masters in Kabul, the Taliban. Two months ago, the Islamists struck and swept away the Western-backed government within a few days. What followed was dramatic. For days, the Americans and Europeans, caught completely off guard, tried to evacuate their nationals and Afghan aid workers from the airport. In the meantime, the airlift has long since been completed. An eerie emptiness reigns at the airport. After 20 years, Americans and Europeans have left Afghanistan to its own devices. Shortly before the Taliban invaded, we were still in Kabul. We met Afghans there who had had high hopes for the West. Many of them were left behind. What will become of them now? A desperate video sent to us during the evacuation makes us fear for the worst. It comes from Wahed, a former employee of the Bundeswehr, the German armed forces. Afghanistan is now controlled by the Taliban. Our situation is very, very bad. Our lives are at risk. We want you to evacuate us as soon as possible. Please, German people, take care of us. During our last visit to Kabul, Wahid told us his story. For four years, he worked as a translator for the Bundeswehr, went into battle with the troops and risked his life. They were not calling me an employee, actually. They are calling, comrade, come on, friend, come on. I was taken for different military operations. And also, I was allowed to carry the weapons, like a German soldiers, shoulder to shoulder. Until the end, Wahid is convinced that the Germans will fly him out. But when the Taliban invade, the rescue fails to materialize. Wahid and his family's lives are in acute danger. Again and again, he writes pleading for help. A call from the foreign ministry impels him to go to the airport, where thousands are now thronging and inconceivable dramas are unfolding. He sends pictures of him persevering with his family for a day and a half in the middle of a desperate crowd. And then everybody was crowding, asking, this is my Paper, please rescue us. This is my paper. Everybody was showing their papers. It was a nightmare for us. We will not forget that night. We were about to be killed before we could enter. In front of my children, there was one dead, one killed. The Americans plaster and cover. We witnessed, and one wounded. You can ask my wife, my children, they saw. Wahid fights his way to the terminal, but is turned away. In the end, he has to watch the rescue planes take off without him. How could this happen? What will happen now to all those Afghans who put their lives on the line for Germany and the West and have now been abandoned? A month after our last visit, 
We set off again for Afghanistan, to the Islamic Emirate, as the Taliban now call their state. After a journey lasting several days, we arrive in the capital, Kabul. In the streets, life seems to go on as normal. But Taliban fighters are everywhere. At first glance, they seem friendly, even willing to be photographed. But are they really? We visit the studios of Tolo TV. Before the Taliban took power, the TV station was the critical voice of Afghanistan. And now? A few days before the fall of Kabul, we met Shafiq Gawari. The German-Afghan dual citizen who helped build the station was still optimistic at the time. He was even planning a football tournament. Dass alles so schnell geht und Kabul so schnell von Taliban äh, eingenommen wird, äh, habe ich nicht äh, gedacht. Ähm, ich bin ja von einer äh, Übergangsregierung, äh, die über eine Verhandlungen zustande kommen konnte, ausgegangen. Today, Gawari is stuck in Maastricht, Holland. When the Taliban invaded, he was on vacation here with his family. From the cafe of a country hotel where he goes to work, he tries to keep his station running via video conferencing. It's hard for him. He would prefer to be on site during these difficult times because Tolo has to adapt to the new circumstances. Unsere Nachrichten gehen weiter und äh, ohne Censorship. Ähm, äh, bei Unterhaltung ähm, haben wir äh, selbst Anpassungen vorgenommen, äh, weil wir nicht provozieren wollten. Musikalische Inhalte sind weniger geworden, äh, türkische Serien sind weniger geworden, aber die Arbeit geht weiter. In fact, the program of Tolo has changed. In this studio, for example, music shows were held before the change of power. But music is now banned. Now a harmless cooking show is recorded here. The Taliban still have little effect on the station, but dealing with the Islamists is difficult. What is allowed? What is not? It is a constant feeling out process. Some employees are particularly vulnerable. Like the comedian Riaz Ahmed Shahir, the Taliban are continually taking action against artists like him. For now, however, he is continuing, and he even invites a senior Taliban commander onto his show. The conversation is a balancing act. There are many topics that are taboo for the Taliban. Moreover, the Islamists are not exactly known to have a sense of humor. But General Mubin, the Taliban commander, apparently likes comedy, at least as long as it stays within certain limits. Islam 
ما مسلمان هستیم طبعا یک, یک کمدین اروپایی نمیشه که یک کمدین افغان باشه یک کمدین افغان نمیتونه یک کمدین جرمن باشه همه که ما باید هم طبق قانون طبق هم مقررات خود رفتار کنیم At the farewell, the Taliban leader even shows some humor. <laughs> the Islamist friendliness has quite pragmatic reasons says Tolo chief Gawari in exile in Holland. Allein mit Verboten erreicht man äh, nicht mehr. Ähm, die Menschen geben sich nicht nur mit Sicherheit zufrieden. Wir wollen äh, äh, was zu messen haben. Es gibt, äh, unsere, unsere Wirtschaft ist im freien Fall. Äh, unser Bankensystem ist äh, nicht mehr im Takt. Äh, und Arbeitslosigkeit äh, wird immer mehr, immer mehr. Um, uh, wir haben mit einer schlimmen Dürre zu tun. Um, das alles zusammengerechnet, es gibt uh, viele große Herausforderungen, was die Taliban um, beherrschen sollen und managen uh, sollen. Uh, und wenn sie das nicht schaffen, dann, uh, dann wird es auch schwierig werden. In the first weeks after taking power, the Taliban show an almost friendly face. They declare that the press may continue to report. They say women are also allowed to work, at least within the framework of Sharia, the Islamic law. In addition, the Taliban leaders announced an amnesty for all those who previously were working for foreign troops. But many Afghans do not trust them. They believe the Taliban will soon show their true colors those who worked for the international troops are now in hiding. Including Wahed. After several days, we find the former Bundeswehr translator. He and his family have found shelter with relatives. Wahid does not believe that the Taliban will spare him. If it is amnesty, why the international community, in 10 days, more than 100,000 people have been evacuated. At least they should remain, they should leave all their interpreters, people and everything. Then I could feel at least, oh, yes, I'm not the only one, remain. In the meantime, Wahid has lost faith in the Germans. Now it has become clear why he was left behind by the federal government. The translator, it turns out, has a blocking notice. In other words, he is on a blacklist and is not allowed to enter Germany for security reasons. Wahid himself cannot explain why. But at least as a human being, at least I should know what wrong things I have done it. As a human being, I don't know my mistakes. They can check my background, they can check my relatives, they can check the Afghan government, they can check everywhere. If they could find out even this mistake, then they could put me forever in, in, in jail. Otherwise, I'm innocent. Nothing done anything wrong in my lifetime. Wahed shows us his many decorations. He has received attestation letters from high generals and even carried a gun in the field. To this day, he is supported by his former comrades. They still send messages to him. One of them is Ferdinand Bauer, a former Bundeswehr colonel. Bauer knows Wahed from his missions in Afghanistan and worked closely with him. He has the highest praise for the translator. I have so erlebt, that er erstens a grundehrliche person is, that he had a great interest in having our job to support us, because we are here and we have him gesagt, Wir wollen hier in deinem Land die Quelle des Terrorismus ausschalten und wir wollen euch auch helfen im Wiederaufbau. Und das war auch sein Ziel. Und diese gegenseitige Hilfe war es eigentlich, was ihn charakterisiert hat. Wir konnten uns immer auf ihn verlassen. So how did Wahed end up on the blacklist? 
An inquiry with the German Foreign Office remains unanswered. It is equally incomprehensible why he was ordered to the airport by telephone, during the evacuation by the German authorities only to be turned away. Wahed repeatedly emphasizes that he is not a dangerous person and has done nothing wrong. Instead, he gave everything for the German soldiers. To be honest, I have served the, the German lives. I don't think so that the Germans could save the German lives. I could save it as an interpreter. The Germans have killed the Afghan National Army soldiers by mistake. Then the Afghans intentionally wanted to revenge, but I was the interpreter. I could interfere and could manage the, the and could control the situations. All of this is of no use to him. Because of the blocking notice, Wahid cannot leave the country. With his wife and three children, he is at the mercy of the Taliban. In the meantime, he almost regrets that he ever worked for the Germans. To be honest, I'm ashamed that I'm the father of these kids, that their lives are at risk because of me. I wish I would not be the father. I wish I had not uh, faced this situation. Wahid is not the only one left behind. It's true that the German government made a grand announcement that all local forces would be evacuated. But the Germans not only abandoned countless Afghan aid workers, they were also unable to evacuate many of their own citizens. Hafizullah is one of them. He has been living and working in Germany for 10 years. He was in Afghanistan to bring back his wife and young son when the Taliban invaded. Even during the evacuation, the German Afghan was not informed. Now he feels completely abandoned. Ich lebe seit knapp zehn Jahren, über neun Jahren in Deutschland. Ich habe immer gedacht, Deutschland ist das beste Land und alles funktioniert, je nachdem, Schritt für Schritt funktioniert. Ich bin wirklich enttäuscht. Die deutsche Botschaft in Islamabad, Pakistan. Ich habe mehrere Mal angerufen, niemand hat geantwortet. Ich habe auch heute früh angerufen, zweimal, dreimal. Niemand geantwortet. Seit ich in, in, in Kabul bin, habe ich mehrere, bestimmt über äh, 100 Mal habe ich angerufen. Auch habe ich äh, mehrere Mal E-Mail geschickt. Ich habe ich keine eine klare Antwort bekommen. Together with his family, Hafizullah is hiding in Kabul. As members of the Shiite Hazara minority, they are particularly at risk. In the past, there have been repeated massacres of the Hazaras. Hafizullah's wife is especially afraid of the Taliban. Meanwhile, the family is so desperate that they have hired a smuggler to take them across the green border into Iran. More and more Afghans want to leave the country. Shafiq Gawari from the TV station Tolo also feels this way. He is still stuck in Holland, but is determined to return to Kabul. Many of his employees, however, are taking the opposite approach. For us, is the security of our colleagues and colleagues priority number one. Um, die, wir haben Verständnis für diejenigen, die nicht mehr in Afghanistan bleiben, in Afghanistan verlassen wollen. Und wenn wir helfen können, helfen wir auch. Aber uns ist auch wichtig, unser ähm, Fernsehbildschirm ähm, nicht schwarz werden lassen und äh, dass wir weitermachen können, ähm, als einige Kolleginnen und Kollegen uns verlassen hatten oder das Land verlassen haben haben wir neue Leute eingestellt und die, die, die machen eine gute Arbeit. One of them is Tamina Osmani. We met her during our visit to the Tolo News Studio in Kabul. Because many experienced female anchors have fled, the 23-year-old student is now in front of the camera and she is a news anchor. 
As a woman, this is not without risk under the Taliban. The Islamists are repeatedly calling on female journalists to stay at home. Osmani is one of the courageous Afghan women who refuse to be intimidated by the Taliban. After the takeover, it became clear that many women didn't want to be deprived of the freedoms they've gained in recent years. On the surface, the protests are directed against Pakistan, which supports the Taliban. In reality, they're directly aimed against the Islamists. <laughs> The Taliban seem overwhelmed by the protests. Their fighters are literally overrun. But the Islamists don't put up with this for long. They shoot into the air and beat the demonstrators, as well as journalists who are present. Suddenly, the holy warriors no longer seem friendly, but hard as nails. This is confirmed on the evening when the Taliban introduce their government. It is a cabinet of mullahs, hardliners and wanted terrorists. Afghanistan is threatened by a brutal regime with Sharia law as its legal system. و تفاوت کلی ایجاد شده یعنی ما نیم از پیکر جامعه ما را فعلا در دسترس نداریم متاسفانه Meanwhile the first public executions have been carried out The Taliban's hard line shocks even those who have known the Islamists for a long time Peter and Anna Marie Shvitek from Randasaka have been working in Afghanistan for decades Shortly before the Taliban came to power, we met them in the office of their aid organization in Kabul. At that time, they planned to continue under the Taliban. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Shvitek's have returned to Germany and are very disillusioned. The Taliban are much more ideological than they expected. Wir sind da wesentlich pessimistischer geworden. Wir haben eben gesehen, dass eben doch andere eigentlich die Macht ergriffen haben als die alten Taliban, weil eben jetzt massiv eben auch, auch diese islamistischen, diese islamistische Ideologie wieder so im Vordergrund steht, weil Minderheiten, auch konfessionelle Minderheiten, vor allem auch Frauen, vollkommen Äh, ja, einfach überhaupt nicht zählen bei, der, bei dem, die jetzt Macht haben. Since the 1990s, the Shvitex have been running schools throughout Afghanistan. Countless women and girls have learned to read and write, thanks to them. In August, we were able to visit one of these schools in Kabul. It has since been closed. 
From Germany, Peter Schwitek is trying to organize at least a little money for his employees on the ground. But they want one thing more than anything else to get out of Afghanistan. Ein paar Leute, die flüchten konnten nach Pakistan oder äh, irgendwie nach Katar und so, die oder Usbekistan, die haben eine Chance, vielleicht weiterzukommen oder in irgendeinem größeren Lager zu landen. Aber äh, unsere Leute, die ja, wenn Kabul ist, der ist der Situation ausgeliefert. Sie haben eben über einige Vorfälle berichtet, wo man einfach nur sagen muss, die sind echt bedroht. The fact that the Schwitiks, who worked under the Taliban before, are so pessimistic does not bode well for the future of Afghanistan. More and more Afghans who worked for international organizations are now receiving threats. Wahed, the Bundeswehr translator who was left behind, also received a voice message. Yes, actually, this is one of the Taliban commanders. Now, whatever they order, their commanders, their uh, Maulavis, actually, they will react uh, to search the houses of those people who have worked for the USA and for the international community. That if they order, they will try to find out, search, and then whatever they order, they will kill it, or they will behead it, or they will bring it out in public and put it some kind of uh, oil, black oils, and whatever they want, they can do it. Now just they're waiting for the order of their higher commanders. Wahed is helpless. The blame lies with the blocking notice, which classifies the former assistant to the Germans as a security risk. Before we leave Kabul, we follow up with other journalists who have become aware of the case. We're not the only ones. Back in Germany, Wahed's fate has been taken up by politicians. Corinna Rufa, a member of the Green Party, is in the middle of an election campaign at the end of September. She knows the case better than anyone. She believes Wahed is innocent. Wir haben uns alle Akten liefern lassen an die Geheimschutzstelle ähm, des Deutschen Bundestages. Da ist dann wirklich auch, da sind halt Rollwägen von Ordnern angekommen. Ähm, und ich habe da unendlich viel Zeit verbracht, um nachzuvollziehen, was eigentlich die Begründung ähm, sein sollte dafür, dass Herr Wachit auf eben dieser Watchlist gelandet ist. Ähm, aber ehrlich gesagt ist mir das nicht gelungen. Also es ist mir bis heute nicht plausibel, was die Begründung dafür ist, dass Herr Wachit nicht schon viel früher nach Deutschland kommen durfte mit seiner Familie. Rufa suspects that the Germans simply adopted the judgment of the Americans and Wahed may have ended up on the list for a completely trivial reason. For example, because he had contact with the enemy from his cell phone. The former Bundeswehr Colonel Ferdinand Bauer who supports his comrade to this day, says this is normal. Wer wie er draußen war, im Gelände und auch am Feind, den wir hatten dort zu kämpfen, der lebt dort, der bewegt sich in einem Bereich, wo geschossen wird, wo gestorben wird, wo geredet wird, wo telefoniert wird, und zwar telefoniert auch mit dem Feind. Wenn man nach so einem Gefecht dann zurückkam, wurden natürlich durch eine elektronische Auswertung, seine Handydaten überprüft. Und wer gerade aus dem Gefecht kommt und mit vielen telefoniert hat, die mit Sicherheit auf irgendeiner Liste standen, der kommt natürlich gleich in den Verdacht, was hat denn der für eine Verbindung mit denen? Der hatte eine befohlene Verbindung mit denen, weil die ihm gesagt haben, telefoniere mit dem. Repeatedly, politicians and journalists try to present the case to the defense minister. But when employees from Spiegel TV confront the minister, they are not even heard. Warum haben Sie denn nicht über mal gesprochen heute, Frau Ministerin? Was ist denn so gefährlich an dem Mann?
The blocking notice remains in place, without conclusive justification. Is Warhead's fate and that of his family sealed? Will he, having risked his life for the Bundesphere for years, remain at the mercy of the Taliban's henchmen, along with his family? Suddenly, fate takes a surprising turn for the better for Wahed and his family. Thanks to the efforts of the private initiative Kabul Airlift, the entire family manages to flee Afghanistan, first to Pakistan. In the meantime, their lives are out of danger. And I hope and I want that the German people will take us as soon as possible from here that I can work as soon as possible. And I want my children can be a good people in the future and can serve for the human being because down in Germany, they can get good education and they will be, they will have a better future. And I hope that our dreams can come true as soon as possible. For many more local forces, and for very many Afghans, however, there is little hope. They are now threatened with draconian punishments oppression, and soon, possibly famine. 